This is a presentation on subacute thyroiditis, neck swelling, patient assessment and management. So a 36-year-old woman presents with a four-day history of neck pain and swelling. She has a swollen, painful thyroid. How would you assess and manage her? So my provisional diagnosis for this lady is that she has subacute thyroiditis, most likely caused by decurvins, um, otherwise known as subacute granulomatosis thyroiditis. This is painful and often caused by the virus Coxsackie. Just three phases, firstly hypothyroid, euthyroid and then finally hypothyroid. In terms of my other differentials, it could be another type of subacute thyroiditis, such as subacute lymphocytic thyroiditis, subacute postpartum thyroiditis, but usually these are not infective, not painful. It could also be inflammatory, such as Graves and Hashimoto's, or it could be infective, such as acute suppurative thyroiditis or a bacterial abscess in the thyroid caused by Staphylococcus or Streptococcus. It could also be due to radiation, if they've had recent radiotherapy to the area, or they're on drugs such as lithium or amiodarone. It alternatively, it could be a neoplasm, and these can be benign or malignant. A benign thyroid adenoma can be functional or non-functional. And a malignant thyroid adenoma, the most common cause, 80%, is from is papillary thyroid adenoma, which spreads lymphatically. 15% are follicular thyroid adenomas, which spread hematogously, 3% medullary, and 2% are anaplastic. And unfortunately, the anaplastic thyroid adenomas have very poor prognosis. In terms of history, I would do symptoms to suggest subacute thyroiditis, also assess for risk factors and exclude differentials, and assess for medications such as lithium or amiodarone. In terms of symptoms, I suggest subacute thyroiditis. This includes neck pain, tender, firm, enlarged neck mass, fever, and hypothyroidism signs such as palpitations, malaise, trauma, heat intolerance. I also want to assess whether they had a recent upper respiratory tract infection due caused by Coxsackie and exclude other differentials. Um, so, for example, if they have symptoms such as hypothyroidism, that they're always cold, lethargic, or they gain weight. In terms of examination, do vitals, look at their heart rate and rhythm because hypothyroidism can often result in tachycardia and rhythm disturbances. Also do a thyroid exam to look for signs of obstruction, hypothyroidism and hypothyroidism. Signs of obstruction include dysphonia, dyspnea, dysphagia, Pemberton sign, swallow test, the thyroid moves down on swallowing, the tongue protrusion, the thyroid cyst would move up and cervical lymph adenopathy. Also look for hypothyroidism signs, for example, thyroid bruise, and a bruid, bruid suggests that it is graves because it's caused by the increased vascular flow to the thyroid, a fine tremor, brisk reflexes, pro proximal myopathy, so they have difficulty in getting out of chairs, and ophthalmoplegia seen in graves, for example, lid lag, extraocular muscle weakness, chemosis, exophthalmus, proptosis, dermopathy, including pretibial myxedema. Hypothyroidism signs include goiter, flat, flat effect and depression, body habitus, hypotension, bradycardia, um, they're overdressed and so they're intolerant to cold, dry skin and menorrhagia. In terms of investigations, do blood size to look for sinus tachycardia and supraventricular tachycardia such as atrial fibrillation. Bloods, you want to exclude graves by doing antithyroid antibodies such as thyroglobulin receptor antibodies and thyroid peroxidase antibodies. Thyroid function tests such as low thyroid stimulating hormone and raised T3 and T4 as well as CRP and ESR. In terms of imaging, you want to do thyroid ultrasound with Doppler. In subacute thyroiditis, you would expect to see a focal hypoechogenicity in a painful area with normal to decreased vascular flow. And in Graves' disease, you would see an increased vascular flow to the thyroid. Uh, radioactive iodine uptake can also be used. However, um, in subacute thyroiditis, you would expect it to be very low in terms of iodine uptake because there's already cellular damage towards the thyroid gland. In terms of the management, the first step is analgesia. So you can give them NSAIDs such as aspirin, indomethacin, ibuprofen, and as well as corticosteroids such as prednisolone over two to four weeks. If they're hypothyroid, especially in the early stages of 
for the subacute thyroiditis, you can give them beta blockers or a calcium channel blocker to reduce the tachycardia, anxiety, and tremor. And they have severe hyperthyroidism, you can give them oral potassium iodine or prednisolone because iodine temporarily inhibits the release of thyroid hormone. If they're hypothyroid, you can give them levothyroxine, which is just replacing their thyroid levels. And basically, you want to titrate it according to the thyroid function test. So look at the thyroid stimulating hormone and try and get it um, down um, whilst the T3 and T4 will actually lag behind. So TSH is a better indicator. Thank you so much for watching this presentation. I hope it was useful.